Previously, we have seen how to use cross-coupled inverters as a memory and to hold our state continuously. However, the problem of this circuit is that it does not have any inputs, so we cannot change our states. So, to give an input to this simple memory unit, I can have a NOR gate like this. So, I will use this cross-coupled idea, but to give an input, I will be using a two input NOR gate because the inverters cannot have two inputs so I will be using this cross coupled idea but now I have two other inputs one is called S the other one is R so this S means it is set R means it is reset so I am trying to reset my circuit using this R signal and I am trying to set my circuit using this S signal okay and I will call this Q naught and I will call this out Q okay and let's see how this is working okay so if I make this S1 I am trying to set it set it means I am trying to make my Q1 and Q naught zero right Q and Q naught needs to be inverse of each other not of each other right so let's try to make this circuit set right so if I put a one here a one high logic here right if I have a one at the input of an OR gate I don't care what is this input right this input could be zero it could be one but since this input is one this is the dominant and I don't need to know about this so I don't need to know this right it could be anything it could be zero or it could be one initially whatever its value I don't know but Whenever I make this one, then this Q naught will become zero. Since this is an OR gate, right? A one input to the OR, the output is one, but then we have this NOT here in the NOR, and then I will have a zero. So this one will make this output zero, and zero I will have it here, right? And then let's assume my R signal is also zero. So this is my S and R, my inputs, and I can control them. So I am making S to be 1 and R signal to be 0. If I have 0, 0 here, then I will have a 1 here, right? And then this Q will become 1. And then this one will go to this input and I will have a 1 here. Once I have a 1 here, right? I could have still 1 in the S signal or I could make it 0. It doesn't matter now, right? Now I have a 1 here, so I will have a Q naught to be 0. So using this cross coupled NOR gate, I was able to set my output to be 1, right? So I made S is equal to 1 and R is equal to 0. Then this made Q to be 1 and Q naught to be 0. So this is what I did. I set my output to 1. So also we need to make our memory units to be zero right so let's see how i can make this structure zero let's erase all this so given this circuit right i am trying to make my output zero right so i am trying to reset it so in this case i will make my reset input one and i will make my set input to be zero right so i either make my circuit set or reset so i cannot make both s and r one at the same time so while i am resetting i make my r input one s put zero so let's see let's start from this reset signal right so i have a one at this input and i don't need to know the other input if i have a one here then i will have a zero here and this zero will go to the top nor gate and i have at this nor gate i have zero zero and then zero zero will give me one here and i will have a one here and one one will give me again zero so my q will be zero and my q naught will be one so as long as i have this configuration my q output will be zero so if i do r1 and s is zero then my q will be zero and my q naught will be one. this will be resetting my q to be zero although we do not show in this circuit you can think that we have a capacitor here and we have another capacitor here also these gates they have internal capacitors okay but for simplification we don't show them okay so this structure is called sr latches so we see the first example of a latch 
right so this ledge can store a value and then we can also change the value the output value to be zero or one using this snr signals okay let's write the functionality table and then you will see all the cases so this is my inputs snr okay and four possibilities are one zero so this is the set case zero one the set case zero zero and one one so the outputs are the next value of my output and then next value of my q naught so we already see this one zero case right if s is one r is zero i will have one here and i will have a zero here so this is my set state and my reset state is s is zero r is one my output is zero and q naught is one so these are the next values of my output so if they are zero zero what will happen at zero zero so let's see what will happen at zero zero if i have zero zero here so this was my q and this was my q naught let's look at the top nor gate so if i have zero and q here the output will become so this will become q naught and then if I have 0 and Q naught, I will have a Q here. So the previous value, it was Q and the next value become Q. The previous value was Q naught and the next value become Q naught. So what happened? I did not change my state, right? I just keep whatever my state, the previous state. So I will say here, this will be my Q T, this will be my Q naught T. So this is the hope state, okay? And it says there is no change for the outputs. I will be keeping my previous state. Whatever it is, I will just keep it in my circuit. And one one state. So although we can drive our latch at the same time with S is one and R is one, we call this state forbidden state, okay? You cannot drive this ledge at the same time with s is one and r is one right you either set or reset your ledge you cannot set and reset at the same time there is no meaning for this state although if you put one one then you will have q is zero q naught is zero so this is not acceptable right so we require q to be equal to not of q naught right so they cannot be equal that's why this state is forbidden okay so these are the functionality table of this sr ledge so let's look at the truth table for this sr ledge right so for the truth table i have input qt and i will have this s and r then we need to write all these eight possibilities for these inputs so, and this is my next output right so i will just only write this q now i will not be writing q not just to make it simple for me so in this state so this is my whole state right because i have s is zero r is zero if q is zero my next q value will be zero right because i am not changing my state this q the previous value will become my next one so this is my whole state so if my s is zero my r is one then the next value is zero right so this is my reset state so i don't need to look at my previous value since i am doing a resetting this r will make my out to be zero and then next line is a set state right so i have s is one r is zero so this one will make my output to be one so this is my set state. so one one state so this is the forbidden state and this should not happen and i will say although it will be zero but we will say this is a forbidden state and you should not be using this case okay and then the next state is, is zero zero it means this is a whole state so i will be keeping my last state and last state of my qt is one so this one will become my next output so this is my whole state and the next time i have this s is zero r is one so i don't need to look at the q input right if my r is one so this will make my output to be zero so this is again a reset case so in the next case i have s is one r is zero if this s is one and r is zero my output will become one so this is my set state 
and this state is again this is a forbidden state so this is the truth table for our sr leg so we have seen this sr leg with the nor gate right so why not use a nand gate right? we should also use a nand gate let's try to design an sr leg using the NAND gates. So let's say I have again these two NAND gates and I will be using this cross coupled idea and I have this inputs and let's say this is my Q, this is my Q naught. In this case, how do I determine which one is S input and which one is R? So this is a NAND gate. So in this NAND gate, how do I control this NAND gate? If one of the inputs is zero this zero input is the dominant one right i don't need to look at the other input in the nor gate the one input was dominant so if i put a zero here right at the output q i will get a one and if this is one because one is the non-dominant input for the name so it will have one one and one i will have zero so if i put zero and one I got Q is 1, Q naught is 0. This is setting. And then since 0 is dominant, I will say this is my set input, okay? And this is my reset input. So if S is 0, R is 1, my Q T plus 1 is 1, right? So this was my setting. If you do the opposite, if you put S is 1 and R is 0, let's do the other case. So this is 1 and R is 0. So this zero will make my Q naught to be one and this one will come here and I have one here and one here. My Q output will be zero. So this is my reset state. So this is set. This is reset. Okay. And if you put one one, then if both R is one and S is one. So we have Q naught T here and we have Q T here. So 1 and QT, so if you look at this, then this will give me Q naught T. And then 1 and Q naught T, this will give me QT. So if 1 and 1, I will be holding my state, and my next value will be getting from my previous value. So this is my hold state. And if I have 0, 0, so if I make S is 0, R is 0, this will make my output 1 and this will make my output 1. But the Q and Q naught is the same. This is not acceptable. So this will be 1, but this is a forbidden state. Okay. Okay, let's draw a timing diagram for this SR latch. So assume we are using a NOR based SR latch. So given this S and R inputs like, like this, we will try to find out Q and Q naught. Okay, and we assume initially my Q value is 0. And then Q naught is 1, of course. So at this point, right, so this is our initial point. So I have 0 here and 0 here. So I will keep my values here. Q is 0, Q naught is 1. So now, let's say at this point, S becomes 1. So if S becomes 1, then my Q value will become 1, right? I will be setting it. So, and then... I will still keeping it one. Now it become at this point, right? Both S is zero, R is zero. So I will be keeping what my value. But just at this point, my R is one, S is zero. So then I am resetting. Then this Q should become zero, right? And I will keep it at zero. At this point, I have R is zero, S is zero. So this is a hold state. I will hold my Q value until here. At this point, my S is 1, R is 0, so I will be setting my Q. And then, until here, so at this point, both S is 0, R is 0, so I will be keeping my Q value, right? So this will be my timing for the Q output. For Q naught, what we need to do, we need to inverse our Q output. So this will be 0 up to here. So it will be 1 here, and then it will be 0 here. So this is how SNR is changing our Q and Q naught outputs.